What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Tyler and today I want to bring to you a trend that's probably died off. <laughs> so you remember when a lot of people were doing the ranking of X thing and there's like the, the graph and the charts like S, A, B, D, F, all that kind of stuff. Well, I randomly last night literally was laying in bed and was like, I want to do a tier list for Pokemon games. So that's what we're gonna do today. But first and foremost, if you haven't already, make sure to like the video at the end if you liked this video and subscribe if you haven't. If you're looking for some more content, you know, maybe subscribe, all the good YouTube stuff. So now that we got that stuff out of the way, let's just dive right in. All right, so we have our little, uh, our chart here has S plus all the way to NA, which I actually like that NA is a category because some of these games I cannot rate, which for example, if we started off Pokemon Green, the original game in the beginning, there was green and red and green and red version were the first versions to come out in Japan. So I have not played this. So I guess we'll start off by putting this into the NA section. Uh, Fire Red, I also have not played. I did not get Fire Red. I got Blue version, which is, you know, I kind of wonder how this tier list is going to go because some of these, I feel like if you like the one version, you should genuinely kind of like make the other version almost the same rating, but I guess not necessarily, but I... I did originally have actually Pokemon Yellow. That's where it started for me was uh, was Yellow version. So if anything, I should start with there. Man, I'm already rambling, and we've only put one NA onto the list. <laughs> okay, wait. Let me let me get my head straight first. Let's go back to Red and Blue. So no, I did not play Red or Blue version when a long time ago. I think I hold on. I think I have them. All right, I uh, take that back. I don't have them with me. Whoa, wait, no, I have blue version. I think it's in the living room and crystal version. I still never had red version, but here is my original yellow version, which I was saying is where I started. Again, we'll get back to that in a second. Let's, ta let's backtrack to red and blue. So no, I have not played red. Uh, I'm not going to rank that one just because it doesn't feel right, um, but I can rate blue. I've been playing blue recently now i'm gonna say that i can compare this game to i guess yellow version i think that would be the closest way to compare it um you know there's like a nostalgia right i get that pokemon blue version red even like the green those are the ogs that definitely has a sense of style to them so i think though for blue i think i'm just gonna put it in right here kind of there's not a true middle because, well, no, because there's NA. So I guess B, yeah, B is in the middle, not including NA. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, so B is in the middle. I'm gonna put blue version right dead center. And that is, I don't know, an average game. Now, with that being said, again, this one's close to my heart. Yellow version is the first one that I played and I was a big fan of the Pokemon series that was on TV, which is where like yellow version had a lot of its storyline too. Though I can't say I knew anything about the storyline. Honestly, when I was playing Pokemon games back then, I don't know if anybody else had this, but I didn't even know video games had storylines, let alone a Pokemon game having a storyline. I never beat it as a kid. I had my Game Boy, um, my Game Boy Color and, or just a regular Game Boy. And I think it was a color. And I just remember countless hours in like my mom's van when we were like going on road trips and stuff. And I would just continually replay the game as a new game because I didn't know how to progress. I couldn't beat Brock. <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't know that like tight matchups were a thing. I, all I know is I had a Pikachu and like the Pikachu hated me. And honestly, I'm surprised I love Pokemon the way I do based on how I played that game. Cause it was, it was such a bad playing experience, but it was a great time. I loved this game. I love that you could, you know, when I went back to it now, I love that you can get all the starters. I love how they're presented to you and stuff. And again, it feels more of like you're playing, you know, the Ash Ketchum version, which was the one that I knew. So for me, 
I'm gonna put this as an above average game. It's it's not it's not in like that super S tier, but it was above an experience of just like a regular blue for me at least. I I enjoyed this game and for me, it's above average. Alongside with yellow was gold version. I played so much gold version and I really enjoyed like at that time, I think it was more that I was getting into the games to actually learn how to play. So I wasn't just, I wasn't just walking around aimlessly, not even defeating the first gym, which is interesting because for me, this game was harder. The gym seemed a little bit less forgiving. Now, I don't think I ever got to Ho-Oh when I was a kid. I do remember though, my gold version was the first version that I ever had someone hack it for me. And I had a whole team of Feraligators. So I totally wiped out the elite four members using like level 80 Feraligators. <laughs> it was an incredible experience. I had gold version and yellow version, but I would say that it was still slightly better of an experience, but I don't think it's enough to put it to S. So I'm gonna leave it at an A as well. It, it's still definitely above average of a Pokemon game. Now, silver version, I also had, and I guess when it comes down to it, I think if doing this rank ranking system, I mean, they are the same game. Um, silver and gold are same storyline, everything like that, except one is Ho-Oh, one is Lugia. So I think in this instance, I'm just gonna rank it based off of how I feel with Ho-Oh and Lugia. And I like Ho-Oh more, so I guess I'll put Lugia there. Uh, so silver version is a, a B ranking. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Crystal version. So crystal version, another game that I didn't have before, but I've recently gotten uh, in the past couple of years. This game, this game is awesome. This is the first time I've ever shiny hunted a Game Boy game. I have it on my Game Boy that's in the living room right now. I have an authentic crystal version and there's a whole shiny hunting method that you can do. The way that the shiny hunting works in this game is you get red Gyarados, you trade it over to like blue or red, you take that Gyarados that you just traded, who is not shiny because shinies didn't exist, however, has the same ID. And you take that Pokemon, that Gyarados, who doesn't appear shiny in the other game, you take it to a Ditto, the Ditto copies the Gyarados, and I think it copies it twice. What happens is that that Ditto, you then catch it, it now has an ID that signifies it's shiny. So what you can then do is trade back your red Gyarados, so it'll become shiny again on your crystal version, and then you can also trade the ditto from blue or red, and that ditto is now shiny, and you can breed shinies now in crystal version, which the shiny rate is actually like really crazy. And I don't know, there's a whole YouTube videos out there of like figuring out how to do, I mean, don't take my word. This is a very short synopsis of how to shiny hunt in crystal version, but needless to say, it was an, it's an incredible experience. It is an incredible experience. I am still playing this. So I'm gonna put this into S and if I'm not mistaken, because it's the Game Boy Color, that is when they were first able to introduce shiny Pokemon, because obviously before they didn't have the color, uh, what was it called? Not color palette, but color spectrum, I think maybe. They didn't have that on just the original Game Boy. That's why blue is primarily blue feeling and red's primarily the red feeling. They didn't have the wide range of colors to work with. So crystal, S tier, let's go. Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Hands down out of those three, Emerald is is my favorite. I put maybe like 500, 600 hours plus into this game. I've played Emerald a ridiculous amount and I had both Ruby and Sapphire and I both broke Ruby and Sapphire. Do y'all remember the, um, what were they called, action replays? I guess I had a really crappy Game Shark or whatever, action replay, whatever it's called, because every time I used it on Ruby and Sapphire, it would completely corrupt it and I would never be able to play the game again. My mom rebought me Ruby and Sapphire a couple times and then it was it. I was literally cut off because I kept on trying to hack the game and she would always tell me to. She'd say, why'd you use that thing? You knew it was gonna break your game. Why would you use it? I don't know. Sapphire was the first one that I got and 
Gen 3 is definitely like a really good generation for me. I, I really enjoy that one. I am going to put this in the average though, because I think compared to these other game experiences, Sapphire wasn't as high to top them. And I'm going to do the same for Ruby too. Um, Ruby and Sapphire are pretty equal to me. I like Kyogre, I like Groudon, uh, pretty similar. I love like the Latios, Latios era. I love the Regis and stuff, but I wouldn't say it went beyond those other games that I mentioned before. However, Pokemon Emerald, hands down, has been one of my favorites. It's going S+. I mean, there's I could talk about this game forever, literally, but Pokemon Emerald was the one that I spent the absolute most time with, and all my hours have been pumped into that. So first S plus game is 100% Pokemon Emerald. Fire Red and Leaf Green. Uh, so again, I did have most of these games, which I had most of these games, not just because I wanted both. I actually played with my mom these games. So I would get one game and then she would play the other game. So that's why I typically had both games. So on this one, I had Fire Red and my mom had Leaf Green. And same with honestly all these, like I had Soul Silver, she had Heart Gold, I played Black, she played White. We've done that for a long time. So that's why I've played most of these games, like both of them. But anyway, so Pokemon Fire Red, again, it's like a, I guess a copy of Pokemon Red, just modern day graphics and stuff. It's on the Game Boy Advance, obviously, instead of made for the Game Boy itself. Um, but you know, I didn't really, I didn't really care for it all that much. I'm gonna probably put red and green as a below average. Um, again, I was a kid when this came out. I kind of thought they were a little too hard and I don't know, it's kind of a negative point in my life playing those games. But doesn't just say that they're bad. For, for me, they were just below average. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, two games that actually recently got an update on the Switch. Uh, I had Diamond, I never had Pearl. So I'm gonna put Pearl right ahead into the NA slot. So I did not, I did not ever play Pearl. Uh, Pokemon Diamond though, however, ugh, man, there are more facts about me being a brat as a kid than there are talking about these games. <laughs> so when I was a kid, I asked for Pokemon Diamond. My mom went to probably like Walmart to pick up the game for me and stuff, which is crazy because as I think back, I don't even know how I knew that Pokemon Diamond was out which is so weird. Maybe like Cartoon Network had commercials about it or something. I don't know, but I, I knew Diamond went out and I asked her to get it for me if she could. And she came back and told me she didn't have, they couldn't find it, so she didn't get it. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty sure I threw a tantrum and she actually got me the game. <laughs> oh, God. oh, it was such a bad kid. Oh man. Pokemon Diamond was an incredible experience for me. That was the first DS game. And my mom equally loved the game, but mainly for the mining aspect of it. She loved going underground and just tap it on the screen. She loved doing that and finding all the fun, rare items in the mines. And a mixture of seeing her excitement with it, as well as just experiencing a Pokemon game for the first time on the DS made this game a great experience for me. And so for that, um, I keep coming back to my thoughts on yellow. I'm gonna put it above. I think I'm also gonna move, yeah. I think I'm gonna also move yellow to S. Pokemon Platinum. I'll just put it as an average. It didn't leave the biggest impression on me though. We'll make that notice ourselves. Heart Gold was the one that my mom had. Soul Silver, hands down, S plus game, which is, I know this is kind of contradictory, well, in a way, right? So my normal silver is an average game. I put gold as an above average game, yet I'm saying soul silver is like the above, above, above average game. <laughs> soul silver to me, even today, is one of the best looking Pokemon games that we've had. I don't know, and I could be totally wrong on this. I apologize if I am, but when they made this game, they changed the way they were doing like shadowing and like lighting effects. And there's all this just like beautiful towns that you go to and the day night cycles very prominent in it. And the look of that game, even today holds up so well. And not to mention, you finally got to have Pokemon follow you. That wasn't just Pikachu from Pokemon Yellow. If I'm not mistaken, out of these games that we're seeing right here, this was the second game to have a follower 
and the first game to let anyone follow you. Be between the looks and that aspect to a game made this game amazing for me. I love when Pokemon get to follow you around. It is something that I want in every Pokemon game, like every game. I just, I want to pick a Pokemon to just run out of the Pokeball and just walk with me. That's all I've wanted. That's all I really want. And so when you add that into that feature, it really bumps you up in the ranking list for me. So Soul Silver, hands down incredible. If you haven't played it, I really do suggest it. I played Pokemon white version. I think my mom played black version actually. So I'm gonna put that in NA and then I'm gonna put black two in NA. Pretty sure that was the one that she played. Generation wise, love these games. I, well, like I love the Pokemon in these games. I thought they were really fun. Um, I always started with Pepig, so I got the um, Embor. I liked the monkey Pokemon, Pansage, Seer, all that. And then who else did I like from this? Oh, I liked like the Timberline, Sock Throw, Zebstrika. I liked a lot of the Pokemon from this one. So if I had to say, it's definitely above average. And I think I'm gonna put it with gold. And for white too, I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of F tier. I think that is a game that was not supposed to be made. <laughs> I just thought white two was kind of dumb. Pokemon Y, I did not play. That was the one my friend got. Pokemon X, uh, I did have. And Pokemon X is what brought in Megas, which today, hands down, I think Megas were the best thing Pokemon ever introduced. Forget the Gigantamaxing thing. Megas were hands down where it was at. So I'm gonna put this definitely as an above average game and purely just because Megas were amazing. And Xerneas does look cool. Xerneas looks pretty dope. So I did not have Alpha Sapphire, so put that in NA, but I did have Omega Ruby. And as I've talked about in the beginning, uh, Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald have special place in my heart. I really enjoy Gen 3 as a whole. I thought the game looked similar to what they try to do with Heart Gold. Uh, they just tried to obviously do it for the Gen 3. I think they did a pretty good job. And they also introduced the Primals, like Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon. They look dope. <laughs> so I would say because it's similar to Soul Silver, I'm gonna rank it above. I'm not gonna rank it too high because was it the most necessary game ever? No, no, and I, and I recognize that. I'm gonna leave it in A right now. It might be an S, but we're gonna leave it in A. All right, Pokemon Sun. Now, Moon I did not have. And, oh, which one did I have? I don't think I played Ultra Sun. And actually we'll just move. Okay, I didn't have Eevee. I didn't have Shield. Didn't have Pearl. Pokemon Sun, this is the introduction of the Alola region. I didn't like. I wasn't a big fan of the Alolan games. Um, I think they're a little bit better than white too, because literally that game didn't have to exist. So I'll at least give it that credit. Um, but it, I don't know, I, I did not necessarily like them all that much. Um, the shiny hunting method in Ultra Moon was kind of cool. So I think because of that, I'm, I'll put it a step above just regular sun. Again, the, uh, I don't really think it was that good of a game. Let's go Pikachu. Uh, this is a fun one. I got this one on my birthday. Well, for whatever reason, I was home and I sat on the living room couch from like 9 a.m. till maybe 7 p.m. And I played that game all day long and I loved it. I thought it was really fun. I, you know, I wasn't thinking that this game was going to be some brand, you know, brand new game breaking thing. Like I knew that it was just more of a Pokemon Go gimmicky kind of thing. And you know, I, I liked Pokemon Go a lot, especially during the time of me playing this. I love the shiny hunting method and I love that Pokemon were in the overworld. That's what I like too. You, and you got to have, oh, you got them to follow you. You had Pokemon follow you, you had Pokemon in the overworld. You even had Pokemon that would like specifically do things with you. So like Machamp would carry you in its arms, Snorlax, you're on its belly riding around. And if they were shiny, you would see them as shinies. And the shiny hunting method is easy, hands down. It was, it was the easiest. It, honestly, they were throwing shinies at you. They couldn't throw shinies at you any faster. 
but I liked that. I thought it was fun. I really liked that a lot. This is what really drove home shiny hunting for me. Like I've gone back to a lot of these games to do shiny hunting, but Let's Go Pikachu is actually what started my shiny hunting in general. I, I guess it was the ease of it was really what brought me in. And I know I'm like late to the game. I mean, this is the Nintendo Switch era, but I don't know. It's like what's helped me today to be a shiny hunter. Uh, and so I think that has a really good special place in my heart. And the more I talk about it, and I know this is probably crazy. I don't think anyone has Let's Go Pikachu in their S plus tier, but I'm going to put it there. And it's not just, you know, not just because of the, the game itself, more of what's around that game and like the meaning that it has to me. And if that game, if I didn't play that game, I may not have been like shiny hunting like I am now, which is kind of sad to think because of how much I love it. And so for that, I'm going to say thank you. Let's go Pikachu. You helped me out a lot. So we'll put that as an S plus Pokemon sword. Um, this is a tough one. There's a, there's a very hard one on this. So Pokemon sword was an okay game. It was all right. I do not like the, uh, Gigantamaxing at all. <laughs> I don't care for it. The legendaries were kind of meh for me. Some of the Pokemon were really cute. Um, I thought that the the wild area was kind of boring, kind of bland. Didn't really enjoy it. Overall, the game wasn't incredible. I would say it was like an average game, but there's a but. This Pokemon game in general is where I started streaming Pokemon. It started with Pokemon Sword. It is how I learned about a lot of people in the community. And it's even like the first time I met someone named Nomi, who you should totally check out. At the time of this video, it actually has a 30% code off for G Fuel. So use code Nomi. I'm just gonna smack that on the top of this screen. Remember that, and she's awesome. You can check out her Twitch. She's got YouTube, Instagrams, TikToks. Honestly, I'm just gonna just know me everywhere right now. You should look her up, she's cool. But she uh, she gave me my first channel raid when I was playing Pokemon Sword and it was like, the experience I had was amazing. So I would say that this was for me an average game. This is why I said that I'm kind of torn because the game was average, but what I experienced through the game was really awesome, especially meeting the friends that I met through it. Um, and so I, I'll, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up solely for like the community that I met. So I've talked to you about it before. Obviously you could see that diamond is S tier for me already. And I'm gonna be honest, brilliant diamond, it's S tier. <laughs> I mean, it's it's Pokemon diamond and it's on the switch. It's looks great. I love the chibi look. I'm really into like chibi style characters. There's not much more that I can already, that I can say that I haven't already about diamond. And for me, brilliant diamond had what diamond did added some things that I thought were a little bit better. And yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I thought it was a, a really great game. We have Pokemon Legends Arceus. S plus for sure. For me, <laughs> Pokemon Legends Arceus has probably reached my top three list of Pokemon games. Don't get me wrong. I love the traditional style of the Pokemon games, but I think that what they did is really changing the name of the game. And I think it's changing it for the best. I, I think that Legends Arceus really sets the new standard for Pokemon going forward. But needless to say, I'm having a great time with it. I love shiny hunting in this game. I love that shinies are part of the game. They're, it, it feels like the core of Legends Arceus is also including shiny Pokemon because of all the little things that they do regarding shinies. And for me, it's just, it's just the best. It's just so good. There we have it. This is my complete list from S all the way down to F, including some NA of games that I did not play, but needless to say, here it is. And I'll probably, you know, post this on my socials and stuff. So if you're following me there, Mr. Teenager Everything on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, here on YouTube. You can also watch me live over at twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Teenager. But needless to say, I think we're done here. Hope you all have a great one and thanks for watching.